the dose you're using is very, very modest. That's about 25% of the dose that we would use for treating, say, for example, allergy inflammation. Welcome to Dog Cancer Answers, where we help you help your dog with cancer. Here's your host, James Jacobson. Thanks for joining us on today's question and answer show. We generally have two shows a week, a Q&A like this one and a longer deep dive episode. And this week, both are on one of the most commonly prescribed drugs in veterinary medicine, prednisone. Today, we hear from Debbie in Nevada, who asked Dr. Dressler about long-term use of prednisone in her Rhodesian Ridgeback. Let's listen in. Hello, my name is Debbie. I'm in Nevada. I have a 75-pound Rhodesian Ridgeback with intestinal lymphoma as a four-year-old. We have been supporting her both with CHOP protocol and holistic and acupuncture, ozone therapy, alkaline water, music therapy, whole tones, essential oil therapy, and anything else we could possibly think of. She's almost three years since diagnosis. My question regards prednisone. She started on 30 milligrams of prednisone and has been on a decreasing dose. And to this day, she is still on prednisone, five milligrams every other day. My question is, at what point do you take them off prednisone? At what point do the side effects of prednisone outwarrant the risk benefit for keeping her on sustained prednisone since it's such a low dose? Thank you. So what advice do you have for Deborah? Good question, Deborah. If I were managing your case, I would probably continue doing exactly what you're doing, perhaps with a couple of exceptions. The risk benefit, in my estimation, leans towards the use of chronic low-dose prednisone. I actually think that's a smart thing for you to do. However, what I would also do, based on the treatment philosophies that you had just described in terms of what you're doing, and being consistent with that kind of guardianship, I would definitely be looking to get the silymarin. Denimarin is probably your best choice for that so that you can try to minimize some of the liver toxic effects of chronic use of corticosteroids, which is prednisone. However, the dose you're using is very, very modest. That's about 25% of the dose that we would use for treating, say, for example, allergy inflammation. Another really good one is the cordyceps mushroom. Dog of that body weight, roughly 75 pounds, you would be using human doses. I think your best source for cordyceps is Aloha Medicinals, which is based in Nevada. Discuss all of these things, of course, with your veterinarian too, before making changes. I'd like to thank Dr. Dressler for answering Debbie's question, which is such a common one. How long do you use prednisone? The side effects of pred can build with long-term use and wise dog guardians keep that in mind. But PRED is such a commonly used drug. It's helpful in so many illnesses that it's almost considered a miracle drug. That's why we have another veterinarian, Dr. Tammy Powell, coming on later this week in a deep dive episode that explores prednisone in detail, its uses, benefits, and side effects. You won't want to miss that episode. We've placed a link to Dr. Tammy's article about PRAD on dogcancerblog.com in the show notes, which you can find in your podcast app or on dogcanceranswers.com, where you can also listen to or download our entire back catalog. That is the best way to get the information you need to help optimize your dog's life quality and longevity. Just a couple things to wrap up on today's show. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, write a review, and tell a friend and your veterinarian about the show. Telling your friends and associates about Dog Cancer Answers is how we grow. And everyone here on our team would appreciate your support so that we can continue to support as many other dog lovers as possible through what we all know can be a very difficult time. Those touchstones remind me to remind you to call our listener line, just like Debbie did, and leave your question about dog cancer for one of our veterinarians to answer on a future episode. Call 808-868-3200 or visit our website at dogcanceranswers.com. 
And finally, we'd like to thank our sponsor, the Dog Cancer Survival Guide Book, by our guest for today, Dr. Damian Dressler and Susan Attinger. It is available wherever fine books are sold, both online and in physical bookstores, and you can get the book right away, direct from the publisher. It's available in paperback with free shipping in the USA or as an ebook edition for less than $10. To get either the ebook or the paperback, go to this website dogcancerbook.com. And because you are a listener to this show, if you use the promo code podcast, you can save 10%. The website again, dogcancerbook.com and use the promo code podcast for 10% off. That is www.dogcancerbook.com. Again, our thanks to Dr. Dressler for being our guest on today's show and to Debbie for asking her question. If you'd like to reach out to Dr. D, his website is www.vetinkihei.com. Until next time, I'm James Jacobson. From all of us here at Dog Cancer Answers and Dog Podcast Network, I wish you and your dog a warm aloha. Thank you for listening to Dog Cancer Answers. If you'd like to connect, please visit our website at dogcanceranswers.com or call our listener line at 808-868-3200. And here's a friendly reminder that you probably already know. This podcast is provided for informational and educational purposes only. It's not meant to take the place of the advice you receive from your dog's veterinarian. Only veterinarians who examine your dog can give you veterinary advice or diagnose your dog's medical condition. Your reliance on the information you hear on this podcast is solely at your own risk. If your dog has a specific health problem, contact your veterinarian. Also, please keep in mind that veterinary information can change rapidly. Therefore, some information may be out of date. Dog Cancer Answers is a presentation of Maui Media in association with Dog Podcast Network. 